Welcome to Book Talks, and I am your host, Dimfo Mahale, the show that speaks to health, education, and so, so much more. Today, we have a very important guest with us, Me Mabelebele, and she will be speaking to us about what her involvement is within government. Let's welcome Me Mabelebele. How are you? Thank you very much, and... Uh... I'm fine <laughs> this morning. Thank you. Did you rise well? Yes, uh, it's a good Monday. It's, uh, a... it's Women's Month. Yes. Uh, one looks forward to each day. Chee, chee, chee. Mm. So, Mema Belibeli, can you please tell us about your work or what you do as a Chief Director at the Department of Women, Youth and People with Disabilities? Okay. So, I'm the Chief Director rights of persons with disabilities yes, responsible for advocacy and mainstreaming yes ma'am uh, which is a branch of the department of women mm -hmm. so our branch is responsible for disability matters mm -hmm. within government uh, the coordination thereof the mm -hmm. advocacy thereof the mainstreaming thereof the monitoring and the evaluation thereof mm -hmm. so the rights of persons with disabilities branch has got two components uh, one that I've just uh, spoken to, but the other that deals with uh, governance and compliance, mm -hmm. which monitors, evaluates, deals with international obligations, reporting, mm -hmm. and so forth. So you as a chief director, are you in management of all of those things that you've just mentioned? Yeah, I manage the whole program right. on advocacy and mainstreaming. All right. In terms of Women's Month, um, what are the programs that we can look forward to from the department? Okay, I think first of all, the important, it's important for me to explain mm -hmm. uh, the actual mandate yes, of the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Yes, ma'am. Specifically so that I'm able to give you context of my response to the question. The Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities mandate mm -hmm. is to lead the coordination mm -hmm. of uh, empowerment of three sectors, uh, women, youth, and persons with disabilities. So as we lead, we coordinate government programs broadly, mm -hmm. private sector programs, civil society programs. In other words, we interface the three layers mm -hmm. um, uh, of society, both mm -hmm. government, both private sector, and also civil society organizations that mm -hmm. are working with the three sectors of women, youth, and persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about empowerment generally uh, because there's economic empowerment, social empowerment, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So we the lead in that regard. So our key focus is to ensure that since government's role is to create an enabling environment mm -hmm. for women, youth, and persons with disabilities to thrive, and to access opportunities and resources, mm -hmm. then our role becomes that of policy uh, 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 coordination, ensuring mm -hmm. that each and every department, as an example in government, responds adequately to women, to youth, to persons with disabilities. So we mourn the policy coordination, and mm -hmm. we know that uh, for effective service delivery policy, has got to be set in place because then it holds people accountable mm -hmm. to what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As to youth development, right, seeing that there are young people around the room, right, um, how is, is government or how is the department ensuring partnership with the youth or with, with civil organizations that you've mentioned? Okay. Like I said... Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 more a policy driver. Mm -hmm. uh, the legislative environment we set. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to youth matters, we have also an agency mm -hmm. called the National Youth Development Agency, which is actually overseeing implementation of programs. But it's not the implementer of mm -hmm. programs. Perhaps I need to explain that all of society, mm -hmm. be it government, be it the private sector, yes, all of us deliver services to citizenry. Mm -hmm. We implement programs to citizenry. Mm -hmm. Now, when we talk about citizenry, mm -hmm. within that citizen component, you have got children, you have got youth, 
you have got persons with disabilities, you've got women, you've got veterans, you've got the elderly. Mm -hmm. So all of that are citizenry. So matters of women, of youth, of persons with disabilities are mm -hmm. everybody's business. Mm -hmm. As long as you're delivering a health service. So you're delivering a health service to women, to youth, and to persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. The one element that we need to acknowledge is that all of these uh, 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 groupings are not homogeneous. Mm -hmm. They all have different needs. And hence, in delivering effective services, you will then have to categorize and segment mm -hmm. uh, how you deliver services to them. You can't deliver services for young people the same as you deliver for older people. Mm -hmm. So you need to craft and come up with programs that are specifically uh, aimed at young people so that they respond appropriately to them. Mm -hmm. so, so the Department of Women being the coordinator will mm -hmm. ensure that policies are set in place. Every department has got to meet a particular threshold of young mm -hmm. people, right? Every department has got to create an enabling environment for young people to, to access yes, whatever mm -hmm. that department is providing, be it employment, be it business, be it any opportunity that may arise. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, yeah, and, and, and our role with the NYDA is mm -hmm. also to, 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 to enhance and maximize innovation around youth uh, 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 programs, youth services, mm -hmm. and even initiatives of young people that we may not be aware of as broadly as, as a society. Mm -hmm. uh, ensure that we untap and we unleash and we open doors for young people to find themselves into the different uh, spaces that they need to be in. Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, we used to have a program. Uh, it's still there. It's just like people are underplaying it now yeah. on the take a girl child to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a program that was aimed at exposing young girls to the work environment. True. Um, and the work environment does not only mean corporate. Mm -hmm. It also means any space where women work. It might be the hospitality business. Yeah. It might be in tourism. It might be in the construction sector. Yeah. So, so that's, that is what that program was about. So mm -hmm. government created an enabling environment for that to happen. We have got the TechnoGirl project where we're exposing yeah. opportunities to young people who in technology. And we're saying whether you're, 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 you're an innovator, mm -hmm. yeah, innovator or, or, or in games, for, for entertainment, yeah. or you want to develop a program to advance a particular activity, uh, uh, you know, your TikToks, your, all this that yeah. we have, they were developed by young people some yeah. way because they were exposed to technology. True. So that's what uh, 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 we do. But over and above that, we drive policy of government to ensure mm -hmm. that it's not done on a, on a uh, as and when basis, but it's compulsory for every department to be mindful mm -hmm. that in everything they do, they've got to develop specific programs, they've got to budget for young, for youth programs, services, and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, our health services, let me give an example. Mm -hmm. You walk into a health institute, most young people will say uh, uh, our institutions don't respond to young people because when you get there, you get uh, 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 services, people are rude to youth, mm -hmm. people. It's because we have not responded uh, uh, to how we should best service young people. So mm -hmm. our, our department's mandate is to ensure that that department that is responsible for that aspect mm -hmm. is able to put in place mechanisms that respond to that issue. Yeah. So if we've got what we call the youth policy, mm -hmm. uh, which was crafted by young people. For it to be crafted, we had to ensure that participation of young people as individuals, mm -hmm. young people in tertiary institutions, young people from whatever space, make inputs so that different duty bearers, yeah. both private and public, are able to respond to that. Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's about youth. But the same with persons with disabilities. Yeah. We work closely. We collaborate with civil society organizations of and for persons with disabilities, mm -hmm. organizations of parents, of children with disabilities, organizations of parents of people with disabilities, mm -hmm. because different disabilities have required different uh, programs and different ways to interact. There are sure. adults with disabilities who don't have the capacity to be able to, 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 to represent themselves, and therefore mm -hmm. their parents, who are their caretakers, mm -hmm. are able to then do that with them on their behalf in the best way mm -hmm. uh, they're able to communicate with them. So, so 
all that space, all that regulation of that space yeah. is done by the Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities. Speaking of, of the policies, right, our youth um, mainly are despondent to, to government, right? And as you spoke about like, the different programs that you have, um, some may be aware, some are not aware of them, or some are downplaying them, like you said, right? So how can we bridge that gap into creating awareness? Does it rely on us as youthful people who know about these programs to go to our friends and be like, yo, dude, like, NIDA is doing this, you know, and I, and I is doing that. Um, how can you respond to that? Education and awareness. Um, I know that many people tend to think that we're overdoing it. Mm -hmm. But I always say what I know today when I'm 18. Uh, when I'm 25, I might not need what I learned when I'm 18. But there's an 18-year-old who still need to know yes, when they're 18. When I'm 25, I require to know what is suitable for my age. So education and awareness, we mm -hmm. can never say we have done enough of it. So people need to be aware of what is available for them. But I want to, 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 to just stress something very important. Young people need to understand they are young people, right? I'm talking because I'm no longer a young person. <laughs> um, when you're young and you're a teenager, mm -hmm. you need to educate yourself. Government creates an enabling environment it provides you with basic education, mm -hmm. basic education which is free in South Africa now. Mm -hmm. You can access a high school closer to your community or home where you stay. You just need to go to school mm -hmm. and access that which you need to access in terms of a particular qualification. Mm -hmm. for, for any ordinary young person, I would say you would need a metric certificate. For a young person with a disability with particular needs, you would need a particular qualification to get out of school. There are those young persons with disabilities who are able to get metric. There are those that are not able to get metric due to their different disabilities mm -hmm. who then qualify to get NQF level qualifications, mm -hmm. which is recognizable and is equivalent to a metric. Mm -hmm. You leave your, 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 your uh, uh, basic schooling environment, you go into a tertiary environment. Government has created NESFAS. Mm -hmm. Because there was a need. We know that youth from poorer communities are not able to access education in tertiary institutions. Mm -hmm. So we created NESFA specifically to give access to those, uh, to, to, the, to, the, to the youth to be able to advance their, 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 their education mm -hmm. and qualify, and qualify in particular fields that they are knowledgeable and passionate about. Mm -hmm. Because that's what, as a young person, you need to do. You must yeah. unleash and discover yourself. True. Don't go with the flow and the wind. Yeah. That, okay, people are in construction, they're building uh, bridges and houses, and yet you know you are one person who doesn't like construction, and you follow that trade, yes. you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we are mindful that there are factors that affect some young people. Mm -hmm. For instance, poverty levels, um, uh, um, um, and different circumstances in the different communities. Mm -hmm. um, issues of, of disabilities, for instance. We know very well that historically, um, uh, most young persons with disabilities were kept from schools. True. So we need to redress that environment. And that is why, working with the Department of Basic Education, we came up with an inclusive education policy, which then identifies and allows young persons with disabilities and children with disabilities to be allowed into schools. Mm -hmm. The Department of Education has moved to even ensuring that your mainstream schools become fully inclusive so that we accommodate particular disabilities. Mm -hmm. so, so there are certain disabilities that do not need to be in a special school. I'll yeah. give you an example. There are certain, there, there, there are uh, uh, um, persons who are blind mm -hmm. who can operate and function very well in a mainstream school. Persons who are deaf who can be accommodated by a mainstream school. Yeah. We just need to create an enabling environment and that's what education is doing. Mm -hmm. So that we leave special schools to then deal with special cases, special mm -hmm. uh, disabilities. For instance, sure. a person who's deaf and blind yeah. will need a special school. A person with autism will need a special school. And these, 
at most, uh, uh, um, we tend to respond very well as society, as I was saying earlier, to persons with physical disabilities because they are visible. Yeah. We, we now know that we have many people who are having non-visible disabilities, yes, which can be classified as your mental disabilities and so forth, neurological uh, and so forth, mm -hmm. you know. And, and because we do not educate and make people aware of all of this enough, um, then people do not know how to interface and interact and even support mm -hmm. uh, persons with, with particular disabilities or youth with particular disabilities to advance them to the next level. You know. So education and awareness, you cannot downplay it. It impacts yeah. on all levels of a person's growth. If, you, if you're, you, you go into a high school where young people have learned to, to be divided by, by disabilities, you put persons who are deaf in one, in one school, you put a, 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 a ordinary a, 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 a persons, a young people in another school. And by the way, you would find that some of the learners that you have in your mainstream school are actually having a disability which is related to deafness. But because yeah. you don't know much about it, they fall within the, 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 mainstream, the mainstream and they're not attended to, yeah. you know. So, so that, is, that, is, that is what I mean by, by we need to ensure that we continue with education and awareness at all times, but targeted education and awareness that addresses particular groups of people, particular age groups of people. Mm -hmm. If we're targeting youth, let's make our education and awareness campaigns interesting because the young mind needs to be you know, to be yes, yeah. to be to be prompted and, and to be, captivated. Yes, well, and captivated. Yeah. That's the right word. Yeah. yeah. And 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 also I was giving an example of social media. I was saying um, unfortunately education is 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 is, is provocative in yeah. its in its nature. Sure. Uh, because you, are, you want to move a person from lack of knowledge to knowing, right? Sure. So, and you want to change a mindset. So, take social media, for instance. Most older people my age uh, were not receptive to it. Yeah. But now all of us, unfortunately, have got to, and we had to learn. Yeah. It was imposed. Yeah. We had to learn. It's the same with education of any, and awareness of anything. Um, we just have to learn that we need to educate people and make them aware of what is there. Yeah, that's very true. Recently, the president of our country has announced that South African Sign Language is the 12th official language in our country. How did that process come to be? Phew, it was a very long process. It was long, however. Mm -hmm. South Africa being the progressive society that it is, mm -hmm. and government being very progressive, South African Sign Language has been uh, instituted for mm -hmm. a very long time, even before the official announcement and the ascension of the president making mm -hmm. it an, an official language. And I, I just want to point out first that I'm glad that you said South African Sign Language, yes. because it is South African Sign Language and not Sign Language. Mm -hmm. There's a difference. Each one of us, as I'm speaking to you, I'm signing. Yeah. I'm using signs. Yeah. But I will understand what I'm signing. Uh, other people might not know. Exactly. So South African Sign Language is an official language which is formalized to be able to communicate uh, 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 information mm -hmm. to persons who are deaf. And again, it is not the only medium of communication for deaf people. Mm -hmm. Deaf people are not homogeneous. They vary. As a Thank result, you. yes, they vary. As a result, there are those that require lip reading. There yes. are those that require, that are hard of hearing, that require, you know, yes, like uh, me. methodologies yes. and so forth. South African Sign Language accommodates. It's, the, it's, it's, it's what we can say that, what we can call a language that is formalized to, to actually... Uh, to, to, to regulate mm -hmm. how we communicate with persons who are deaf. Mm -hmm. Most people who are deaf learn South African Sign Language in school. Yeah. Department of Basic Education has implemented South African Sign Language for years. Mm -hmm. And the uh, institutions of higher learning in South Africa have been providing 
training from mm -hmm. a basic level intermediary to advance to professional mm -hmm. on South African Sign Language. Mm -hmm. What we are saying now with the Ascension and making it an official language is that also in platforms of society, it should be made available. Most mm -hmm. people who are likely now mm -hmm. to use South African Sign Language are those that have been exposed to South African Sign Language from a school level. Mm -hmm. Because when you are born, your mother signs to you. Yeah. All of us, you know, persons with disabilities or not, yeah. there's sign language before you speak True. that your, your parent utilizes to communicate with you. True. That is not South African sign language. It's a means of communication between a caregiver, a parent, and a child. Yes, right? So now when you get to a school, mm -hmm. when you start uh, 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 your lower grade, Mm -hmm. Just as everybody else learns English, Afrikaans, Venek, you learn South African Sign Language. Yeah. But we're taking a step further to say it's not meant for persons who are deaf only. It's meant for all of us in society. Mm -hmm. If we want to effectively communicate with and not to, with persons who are deaf, we need mm -hmm. to learn South African Sign Language. Meaning we'll begin to see South African Sign Language at weddings, bridal yes. showers, uh, and everywhere else. Yes. yes. And there are technological means that are making it accessible for us to be able to communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh. At the end of the day, it's about access to communication. It's about sure. access to information. Sure. Um, during COVID-19 uh, uh, disaster, we made an observation. Uh, government was providing South African Sign Language. It was before it was officialized, because mm -hmm. like I said, it has always been what government progressively introduced. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and most people thought that by providing South African Sign Language, they've accommodated persons who are deaf. And we kept on saying no. In actual fact, what needs to happen is that when you are on the podium, remove your mask. Mm -hmm. So that, because most persons who are deaf learned With to communicate reading. through lip reading. Yes. So you need, they need to lip read yes. as you are speaking. Sure. Because most of them did not have access to South African Sign Language. Yeah. But, but we're on an education and awareness drive with the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture at our service points. We're going to make sure that South African Sign Language is provided in, yes, in courts, at police stations already. It is being provided. Right. And the Department of Justice, through its justice cluster, is already coordinating those efforts. But it has been provided in our courts. In actual fact, um, in most of our courts, mm -hmm. South African Sign Language is provided because um, uh, 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 there are perpetrators who are deaf yeah. as much as there are victims who are deaf. Right. And yeah. also, are there availabilities for Braille as well? Yes. Um, we have not had an issue with Braille. Okay. You know, I always say Braille is the same as South African Sign Language yeah. in the sense that not all persons who are blind uh, read Braille. Yeah. And that is why uh, 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 already you would have other persons who are deaf, especially other persons who are blind, especially young persons who are blind, who are more inclined to use technological means. Yeah. So you need to, to know the softwares that mm -hmm. you need to equip your, your work environment, as an example, with mm -hmm. for them to be able to, to, to perform maximally. Yeah. Um, some use softwares like JAWS, some mm -hmm. use Dolphin, some use various softwares. Depends mm -hmm. on what is their reasonable accommodation needs. Mm -hmm. That is why in the workplace and everywhere else, it's important always to determine what kind of needs your persons with disabilities will require mm -hmm. before you begin to, to, to impart any service, any knowledge and, and information okay. uh, to them. Yeah. So Braille has been there and yeah. it's still there. And there are Braille printers. The private sector has moved um, in the sense that we used to have very huge Braille printers. Nowadays, we have got portable Braille printers. We've got Braille sensors, which can read PowerPoint yeah, presentations yeah. for a person who's blind. And they're able to even do presentations yeah. uh, using their mechanisms that are required for them uh, to make them uh, access. All these um, uh, 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 systems mm -hmm. are in place so that we're able to ensure that Persons who are blind, persons who are deaf, not limited to the two uh, disabilities, but mm -hmm. all persons with disabilities are able to be accommodated 
in any workplace. So no mm -hmm. workplace can come and claim that they do not have funds, they do not have a budget to accommodate persons with disabilities. If you can buy a laptop, you can buy a braille sensor mm -hmm. for a person with disability for them to operate maximally in true, the workplace. True, yeah. true. So moving forward with what we have discussed, um, what does this mean moving forward for the, for the deaf community with the programs that you've instilled? It just means that um, they'll have access to information. Mm -hmm. They'll walk into a service center anywhere and be able to access all information like all ordinary citizens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So with that being said, um, can we move into careers um, that... Um, cater for, 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 for the deaf community because now on news and as you said go to court, you know, there are interpreters, um, sign language interpreters. Can we move into a career like that and is it sustainable? A career like uh, like a, a deaf interpreter. Like that you see on T V, right? Okay. Yes. Institutions of higher learning. Mm -hmm. Right? Most of them including organizations of and of persons who are deaf, mm -hmm. are providing training. You can get training on South African Sign Language on a basic level, just to enhance communication. Mm -hmm. You can get training on an intermediary, um, advanced level, mm -hmm. and professionalism. So when you do professional training, it means now you want to be a professional who's able to interpret and so forth. Remember, it's a language. Yes, as much as in court, they provide an English translating service, mm -hmm. not just courts, every platform where they provide translation of any other language, mm -hmm. they have to provide translation of South African Sign Language. And it's important that I also mention that we're talking of South African Sign Language. So yes, we should all be aware that every country has got its own official language. Yes, ma'am. Because... Um, the most important thing is to understand that South African Sign Language is not English translated into sign. No. It's totally because I'll things. then ask you, how do you sign a, a name like Puti, mm -hmm. as an example? Yeah. How are you going to sign Puti if we are going to translate English into sign? Mm -hmm. So it's a South African Sign Language that has been created so that we're able to depict what uh, uh, we are signing about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So people can move forward into a career like that, right? Everybody. Right. It's not even meant for deaf people. Everyone who really wants to provide uh, South African Sign Language service can do that. Mm -hmm. Actually, most of our South African Sign Language interpreters are people who have been trained professionally on South African Sign Language who went to various universities, like yeah. teachers who are in, uh, uh, or educators who are in uh, uh, schools for mm -hmm. deaf learners. They go regularly to institutions of higher learning to be updated and to be trained on South African Sign Language. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. And it's been happening for years. <laughs> and it's now only that we know about it, whereas it's been happening for years. But we are thankful that we have a chief director like you to let us know about these certain programs and that they have been happening for years because we only think of, oh, it's only happening now, mm -hmm. where it's, it's not the case. Moving on to um, GBV, right? Um, what is the department doing for this month, especially now it's Women's Month? What have you been addressing in terms of GBVF? Um, GBVF has been declared a pandemic, if not a disaster. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you can confine to a month. It's, it's what we need to deal with on a daily basis. So resources, uh, education and awareness, prevention programs mm -hmm. must roll out on a daily basis. True. Um, systems have been put in place to ensure that uh, we respond to GBVF. Mm -hmm. It's not. It seems not to be enough, but there's, 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 there's a limit and a level to which, for instance, government can do mm -hmm. to curb uh, GBVF. It's the truth yeah. that most of the time we don't want to hear, um, sure. unless we realize that as a society generally, mm 
mm-hmm. who are responsible for GBVF. The mere fact that an assault, mm-hmm. whether it's of a boy or of a girl, takes place in front of you and you keep quiet, you are responsible for that GBVF. Mm-hmm. I'm giving an example of an assault because people have come to a stage where they, they've, 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 they've categorized what could be GBVF. It's mm-hmm. when it's femicide and somebody is killed, a young girl is killed, that people then realize that we have a problem. But when an assault happens, mm. which is a build-up to the eventuality of somebody passing on because of that, yes. uh, it's, it's looked at, frowned at, and people do not address it. Mm-hmm. If, as a society, we do not find our own space to play a part in keeping GBVF, mm-hmm. we'll never win this war. Um, the police can respond to GBVF. Mm-hmm. But we, as a society, are responsible, in whether in the home, whether in the community, mm-hmm. whether in the workplaces, we are responsible for, for, for ensuring that we play our part when mm-hmm. it comes to GBVF. In the home, for instance, um, people have uh, normalized assaults, assaults of children as punishment. Mm-hmm. You can see that this is not punishment. This person is assaulting a child. But mm-hmm. we look away. Oh, and by the way, uh, we must know that the recent amendments to the law mm-hmm. actually say if you look away and uh, it's discovered later that you knew you oh, were aware oh, yeah. of that particular crime being committed, yeah. because it is a crime, yes. you are actually going to be charged. So I Yo. thought I should just throw that in. Yeah. So, so we all must play our part. Yeah. The Department of Women, Youth and Persons with Disabilities is responsible for coordinating uh, the National Strategic Plan on GBVF, coordinating all departments, galvanizing mm-hmm. resources, mobilizing everyone, including civil society organizations, mm-hmm. to ensure that uh, we deal with the schedule of GBVF. Okay. Yeah. And how would you encourage the, the viewers at home and even in communities, how do we take initiative to combat GBVF or address even persons with disabilities? I would say be a change agent. Mm -hmm. Determine that certain things can happen where you are. Mm -hmm. Um, Inappropriate touching. Mm -hmm. You know, I like giving simple examples because it's where all this starts. Inappropriate touching, inappropriate pulling um, Mm -hmm. of of, of, of violently people shouldn't Mm -hmm. happen in our spaces. We shouldn't be quiet about certain things in our society. Mm -hmm. We should be able to deal with them. We should call them out for what they are and be able to report them so that they are dealt with. And we should then also participate in education and awareness drives. Make sure we disseminate information. We make people aware. We make young girls aware and young boys aware Mm -hmm. equally that particular actions are actually not allowed. Mm -hmm. You know, young boys in schools and young girls in schools must know that bullying is actually the beginning, if not also a, a particular level of GBVF. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So we need to make everybody aware so that even those that are in schools are able to say, but what you're doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. You know. So we, we need to always ensure that we change the attitudes, we transform people's minds, mm-hmm. but be that change agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With us being the, the change agents, how can we ensure that programs last for a long time because we know that as much as government has interventions, they only last for a day or a week, for example. So how can we as a community and society make sure that we um, prolong these um, uh, programs that you guys have? You know, I was asked this question a very long time ago. In actual fact, we were in a conference in one country overseas, Mm -hmm. that um, how come in certain spaces and and certain environments or countries, Mm -hmm. you hardly hear about GBVF? Not that it's not happening. Yes. You hardly hear about GBVF. You hardly hear about persons with disabilities. It's because people have been made to internalize what is wrong Mm -hmm. so that they understand that this is wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, 
For in, let me start with the, the issue of persons with disabilities. Mm -hmm. When you go into a shopping mall today mm -hmm. in South Africa, especially the newly built malls, you don't need a person on a wheelchair uh, uh, moving around to find a ramp. The, the ramps, the accessible features yeah. have been built in into that particular shopping mall yes, because it's part of the universal design and access of that mall. Yes, They've adhered to the prescripts, right? Yes, so the limitations has been removed. So you don't even have to identify that a person is on a wheelchair. There's a ramp, you know. They've been made universally accessible. Mm -hmm. So we have internalized that. So it's the same thing with mm -hmm. GBVF. Once we internalize that certain things are wrong and we understand they are wrong mm -hmm. and we do not promote them, mm -hmm. there will be no need for us to say uh, it is not enough because we have internalized them. But how do we internalize them? Like I said, continual information, continued education and awareness. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that's been done in our communities in our local spaces mm -hmm. that we are not familiar with. That is why when major campaigns and programs run mm -hmm. at a national level, we think those are the campaigns because they're the most widely publicized. Yes, but there are campaigns. And that is for that reason that we ensure that the voice of organizations at a local level mm -hmm. is heard. And that is why organizations are supported by government. Mm -hmm. uh, over and above the, the, the funding that organizations get from, from, from social development, for instance. Mm -hmm. We collaborate with them on education and awareness about different aspects yeah. to make communities aware. Mm -hmm. But those don't become major campaigns. It's major campaigns that you'll be familiar with, yeah. but it doesn't mean education is not happening in our local space. True. You know? yeah. so, but what I want to emphasize is that we can do more. Mm -hmm. So we need to emphasize on, on disseminating information and ensuring that our people know about these things in their languages mm -hmm. so that they internalize them. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. So how can we get into contact with um, uh, the people who we report to in regards to GBVF? It depends. Um, if you're reporting a case, mm -hmm. you know you go to SAPS. Um, if you're dealing with a, 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 an issue that requires court and support, there are organizations often for persons with disabilities that are able to provide you with that support. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's regarding health matters, you go to the health uh, institutions that provide the services. When you walk into the, into the clinics and, and hospitals mm -hmm. and you're a GBVF uh, victim or survivor, they know the protocols that they need to follow, the same with SAPS and so forth. Mm -hmm. So those protocols are meant to ensure that they safeguard and, and support a, a victim or a survivor of GBVF. And the same protocols are there for perpetrators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you can give one message to, to women and youth and persons of disabilities, um, what message would you leave them with? I would say that uh, every morning when you wake up, mm -hmm. you have a purpose. That's why you woke up. Yes, ma'am. You need to be intentional about being someone who's going to make a change yes, and transform society in whatever space that you find yourself in. You're in your space. We're yes, talking now. <laughs> you intended to have this conversation yes, so that it can be disseminated out there. Yes, ma'am. In whatever space, we can all make a difference. So I would say that we need to be you, you, you need to consciously be intentional about doing something to better mm -hmm. your environment, yourself, and for the others that are there. Right. Yeah. So how can people get a hold of the department? Well, we have a website. Mm -hmm. We have also have social media handles. Hashtag DWIPD, Facebook DWIPD, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. Right. Our website is www.dwipd.gov.za. Right. They can get hold of us there. Right. Yeah. And all of your information and phone numbers are provided they on are the provided website. They are provided on the website, yes. yes thank yes, you very yes. much. Yeah. I want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for your intention, for being here, for giving us so much information and also enlightening us as people of youth.
seeing that we are youthful people here in the studio. And thank you for everything that you continuously do for not only our country, but also nationally, also show, showcasing what South Africa has to offer and the solutions moving forward as a country. I thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a humbling experience. Thanks. <laughs> Guys, as Luke Lupeti, I mean, there is so much together from this episode that you need to be intentional with every season in your life and knowing that no matter where you come from, no matter what you do in this life, be intentional. So until next time, with me, your host, Dimpo Mahali, peace.